good amount of sunshine, but we'll start to see those heavy thundery showers pushing into southern England, Wales as we head throughout the day. Some local disruption and flooding is possible. Generally, temperatures will be a notch down compared to Saturday for the southeast, thanks to an increased amount of cloud, but maybe slightly higher for parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Into Monday, this cold front will be swinging its way through. Behind that, we'll see some fresher air filtering in behind it. So still quite muggy and mild ahead of it, but eventually seeing those fresher conditions swing in. But on the cold front itself, again, really quite unsettled with heavy showers, thunderstorms and rain in the mixture and quite a blustery day for all of us on the whole. There's further unsettled weather as we head throughout the rest of the week as well and low pressure looks like it will be staying in charge. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament, but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic, we do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. It's nine o'clock on television, on radio and online in the United Kingdom and across the world. This is a Mark Dolan tonight special. Now a warning of flashing images coming up. Russell Brand has been subjected to astonishing accusations of sexual assault and rape. Here he is in exclusive pictures recorded for Mark Dolan tonight, arriving at a gig that was scheduled in Wembley and the gig has happened. He's gone on stage, he's received a rapturous reception from his fans, and there he is arriving 
at the venue tonight. So, after 10, I'll be dealing with this extraordinary story, a set of allegations against the comedian Russell Brand, allegations of a sexual nature which could destroy his career and shatter the world of showbiz. We'll get reaction from key figures in the entertainment industry and we'll bring you up to speed with the latest on this developing story. That is all coming up after 10. But in the first hour, in my big opinion, Rishi Sunak is sticking with a ban on new petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030. Whether it's 15-minute cities, ULEs, ridiculous 20-mile-an-hour zones everywhere, or eye-watering parking charges, it's time to end the war on motorists. You won't believe this story as Princess Anne's former all-girls school say that gender is on a spectrum and as the General Medical Council removes all mentions of the word mother from a maternity document, is gender ideology here to stay? Will this woke madness be with us forever? A top international columnist weighs in as tonight's newsmaker. So we'll be dealing with the Russell Brand story at 10 o'clock with some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry. Two hours of big opinion, big debates and a bit of entertainment along the way. Lots to get through first. The news with Ray Addison. Thanks, Mark, and good evening. Our top stories tonight. Well, as we've been hearing, the actor and comedian Russell Brand has been accused of rape, sexual assaults and emotional abuse. That's according to a report in The Times. Now, a warning for those of you watching on television. The following footage contains flashing images. Mr Brand was greeted by cameras tonight as he arrived at London's Troubadour Wembley Park Theatre for his stand-up show. That started an hour late and comes just hours after The Times reported allegations made by four women relating to incidents which allegedly took place between 2006 and 2013. In a video posted online last night, Brand preemptively denied criminal allegations and insisted his relationships have always been consensual. Midst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies, and as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent, and I'm being transparent about it now as well. American XL bully dogs will not be culled. That's despite the Prime Minister's promise to ban the breed by the end of the year. The UK's top vet says an amnesty would be in place for those who already own the animals if they follow certain rules. A similar approach was taken in the 1990s when pit bulls were banned. Well, meanwhile, a man who was arrested in connection with a fatal dog attack in Staffordshire has been released on conditional bail. Ian Price, who was 52, died after he was attacked by two dogs believed to be XL bullies. Police say a 30-year-old man from the Litchfield area has been interviewed a number of times and now been released pending further inquiries. A second teenage boy has been arrested on suspicion of murder after 14-year-old Nathaniel Shani was fatally stabbed in Manchester. Two boys aged 13 and 14 are now in custody. Police were called to the incident last night on Tavistock Square. In response, Greater Manchester Police imposed a Section 60 order, temporarily allowing them to have greater stop and search powers. And finally, police searching for a missing ex-British soldier have been informed by Ukrainian authorities that they have found a body. 36-year-old Daniel Burke from South Manchester was reported missing on the 16th of August. His family had not heard from him and they believed that he had travelled to Ukraine. A Foreign Office spokesperson saying that they are supporting the family. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying, play GB News. Now let's get straight back to Mark.
Thanks, Ray. We'll see you in an hour. Welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. In my big opinion, Rishi Sunak is sticking with a ban on new petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030. Whether it's 15-minute cities, ULEZ, 20-mile-an-hour zones, or eye-watering parking charges, it's time to end the war on motorists. As Princess Anne's former all-girls school says that gender is on a spectrum, and as the General Medical Council removes all mention of the word mother from a maternity document, is gender ideology here to stay? Will this woke madness be with us forever? A top international columnist weighs in as tonight's newsmaker. Are the left-wing American press turning on Joe Biden? I'll be asking the queen of U.S. showbiz royal and political reporting, Kinsey Schofield, live from the U.S. And after 10, I'll be dealing with an extraordinary and shocking set of allegations against the comedian and actor Russell Brand. Allegations of a sexual nature which could destroy his career and shatter the world of showbiz. We'll get reaction from key figures in the entertainment industry and bring you up to speed with the latest on this developing story. That is all after 10. We've got tomorrow's front pages at 10.30 with three top pundits who haven't been told what to say and who don't follow the script. Tonight, Christopher Biggins, Ingrid Tarrant and Lisa McKenzie. Good luck telling Biggins what to say. Tonight, I'll be asking the pundits with offences through the roof, has shoplifting effectively been decriminalised? Can 16-year-olds be trusted with the vote? And are Marks and Spencers right to bring back paper carrier bags? Plus, the most important part of the show, your emails, they come straight to my laptop, mark at gbnews.com. And this show has a golden rule. We don't do boring, not on my watch. I just won't have it. And let's be honest, tonight isn't going to be boring, is it? A big two hours to come. Happy Saturday, one and all. Pop open something cold and fizzy from the fridge or fire up the kettle and let's get to work. The war on cars in this country is so organised and so comprehensive, it makes the conflict in Ukraine look like a minor scuffle. Why is the motor car such an affront to the authoritarians who now govern us? Well, because it represents individual autonomy, freedom of movement. It represents fun. And none of that will wash in the brave new world of climate communism. Which is why it's so disappointing that the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has decided to stick to the bonkers target of banning the sale of new petrol and diesel engine cars by 2030. Even the EU, who have been drinking the climate Kool-Aid for years now, have pushed the target back by five years, following pressure from, you guessed it, the German car industry. No such luck here in the UK, where Sunak is going to saddle hard-pressed Brits with the eye-watering extra cost of an electric vehicle. The problem is, when you buy one, it looks like a worse investment than a pool queue for Stevie Wonder. The This Is Money website have revealed that used electric cars have seen their value drop by as much as 40% over three years. With all 20 of the second-hand cars that have seen the biggest drop in a year across all fuel types being EVs. EV stands for electric vehicles. The value doesn't hold and neither does the battery. Roger Torbloke, who follows me on Twitter, said the following. He said, I asked how much a replacement battery for a Nissan Leaf was after the eighth year or 100,000 miles elapsed. I was told I could not be told. Well, eventually I found out from a Nissan dealer and the price of a new battery, £14,300 plus fitting plus VAT. Unbelievable. So I will not be getting one of these cars. There's no proper charging infrastructure. We have about 40,000 outlets at the moment. We need at least 300,000 when this ban comes into place. Who's going to pay for that? The cars are heavy, which means that when you brake, they emit more brake pad particles than a regular car into the air. And the tyres shed harmful airborne material as well. Again, exacerbated by the sheer mass of these electric vehicles. Some car parks may need to be reinforced to carry the weight of these machines. The precious minerals to put in these batteries are finite, 
and are often acquired via modern-day slavery in countries like the Congo, with teenage kids knee-deep in orange mud for 12 hours a day, mining for lithium so that we can feel better about ourselves as we cruise to Sainsbury's in a Tesla or a Renault Zoe. Now, full disclosure, I will not miss diesel in the long run. It was a catastrophic decision by the then Chancellor Gordon Brown to get us onto that filthy fuel when petrol is much cleaner. And petrol engines are now so impressive when it comes to their emissions that I think they should be an option for consumers for the foreseeable future alongside electric. Let the market decide. What about this beauty? This is my glorious 13-year-old Toyota Prius in astral black. There's some concern that even this type of model may be banned by 2030 or failing that 2035. How could you? This is a great machine that gets me around. It's a hybrid with a small, efficient petrol engine. There I am mounting it with enthusiasm. It's all I mount these days. No range anxiety. I love this car. It gets into a few bumps and scrapes, but so does its owner. ULEZ, 15-minute cities, congestion charges, petrol and diesel cars banned, 20-mile-an-hour zones everywhere, pay per mile, eye-watering parking charges, needing a second mortgage to buy a permit outside your own home. It is time to end this war on the motorist. Driving a car isn't a privilege, it's a human right. This policy to scrap diesel and petrol vehicles by 2030 is a car crash in slow motion for Rishi Sunak. I can tell that Biggins is jealous of my Toyota Prius. <laughs> Very. Much more, much more attractive than his Bentley. Listen, what do you think? <laughs> is Rishi Sunak right to end the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2030? He would argue, the government would argue, green campaigners would argue that these cars are reliant on fossil fuels, which are linked to climate change, and therefore we've got to show leadership and end their sale. But let me know your thoughts, Mark, at gbnews.com. Let's hear from my top pundits, actor, comedian and absolute showbiz royalty, Christopher Biggins, TV personality and broadcaster Ingrid Tarrant and academic Dr Lisa McKenzie. So, Christopher Biggins, the EU have even pushed back by five years on this mad idea. What's your reaction? <laughs> Well, I think it's, it's a real problem. I mean, for instance, uh, our mayor is uh, to blame, I think, for all the cars, the, the, situ the car situation. Now, I think what they should do is completely ban every car in the country <laughs> and then see how much money they're going to lose. Yeah. Because cars make them a lot of money. Yeah. And they, 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 they're blasé about... Yes. It's ridiculous, these 20-mile limits are everywhere now. Another couple of cities I noticed this week have, have grown to be, be told rather to, to endure this 20 miles yes, an hour. all residential roads and streets in Wales. I know. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, what's going on in Wales? I can't wait. There must be terrifying drivers running around. But, I mean, it's, it's just appalling what they're doing. And, you know, everything. I mean, I've got an electric car. I've had two electric cars now. And I change them because I'm worried about the battery situation, mm. which is, that was appalling, that guy who wrote, the, Mr. Torban, yeah. who wrote in. I mean, I think it's, a, it's just 13 and a half thousand pounds for a new battery. It's ridiculous. Oh, and the worst, that's on an average car. You go to the bigger cars, it's even more expensive. Is it really? Yes. Well, I mean, it's, it, I just think that we should get rid of every single car on this island mm. and, then, and then see how they work. And fair. to observe what impact it would have on the economy, yeah. because yes. people in their cars, delivering goods, getting Getting to work, doing deals, and of course domestic stuff as well. Mm. It's part of life, isn't yes, it? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, you have a very good point there, old Biggins. Mm. Um, what you forgot to mention, though, is the fires. Yes, the reinforced car parks, the mm. uh, uh, charging points. We know we're very, very low on those, but the fires. You can't put the fires out of those batteries, uh, the fire brigade, because they, they've got their own oxygen, so you can't snuff out. Normal fires would be, would be fed by the oxygen, so you can just put blankets over them and mm. put the foam and everything. They just have to burn out. And there's a lot. Look at the ferry about a month ago. Yeah. That was carrying EVs and things. Also, in Norway, now, I have to mention Norway. I've just come back from there. And they are the um, have the highest um, uptake of um, EVs in the world pro capita. 
The statistics say the sales in Norway have gone down by 80% in 2022. Now, they're recognising that there are problems there. My brother and my, my siblings, they live there. They're saying very often when there's a massive traffic jam on the road, there's one of two things that will be oh, an accident right. and one that they've got caught in a, an accident and the batteries have run out and now they're causing problems because they have to wait to be oh, towed yeah. away. Also, another thing is the cold. Now, we get colder climates here. Well, we get all sorts of climates, which is fabulous. <laughs> um, and it goes very often to minus 25 and more in the north of Norway. Even actually just on the outskirts of Oslo, it can be minus 20. And the batteries don't do well in that. They drain quicker. Yeah. So you've got enormous problems. And funny enough, and you're saying about Germany that they're, they're pushing it back by five years. But interestingly, China and Germany are the forerunners now. In fact, Germany scores the highest in terms of current customer demand. Isn't that interesting? Well, that is interesting. And yet they're going to... Um, they're, they're, asked, they're extending it by another five years. But then a story in, in, the, uh, in the mail this week, Lisa, that... that uh... Volkswagen are laying off workers in electric factories. I think 300 redundancies announced this week. Mm. That said, these cars are reliant on fossil fuels, you know, regular petrol yeah. and diesel cars. We've got to wean ourselves off the fossil fuel habit. Yeah, I mean, this is all great for people to say when you live in a city that's got uh, tubes, buses, trains, mm. DLRs and everything else, even a boat that goes down the Thames that can take you to work. You come out of the South East, and, you know, unless they're going to start putting proper public transport in, proper infrastructure, not HS2 that's going nowhere and doing nothing. I mean, do we trust these people that can't do HS2 to take away people's independence to get to work and provide them with public transport? Because I, I don't trust them. No, okay. but you know what I think is more sinister? Can I just say something? They, last year they were talking about power cuts, which didn't happen, but that's always been like a looming threat. So what they can do, because they do want to just close the stand and stop us going out and having fun, switch it off and just say, sorry, power cut. Yes. There you go. And, well, look, that, and we that, are really That's stuck. a double solution from Ingrid Tarrant. Uh, what do you think? Are you ready to go electric? The majority of climate scientists think that getting rid of those petrol and diesel cars is a good way of getting temperatures down. They're worried, the majority are, but what do you think? Mark at gbnews.com. Coming up next, as Princess Anne's former all-girls school says gender is on a spectrum, and as the General Medical Council removes all mentions of the word mother from a maternity document, is gender ideology here to stay? Will this woke madness be with us forever? Will you put up with it? We'll speak to a top international columnist who is tonight's newsmaker next. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6pm, Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Rishi Sunak is to stick with his ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel engined cars from 2030. That's the topic of my big opinion. Strong reaction on email mark at gbnews.com. Electric cars, says William. Think why we're being pushed to install smart meters. All new builds have smart meters and charging sockets. Government makes too much money through fuel duty. They won't want to lose the millions on that same fuel duty when we get rid of petrol. Think, as soon as you plug in your electric vehicle at home, the smart meter will recognize the connection and you will be charged all over again and once again hitting the motorist. Francis says, hi Mark, the green lobby must be stopped. Cars represent our freedom of movement. Sunak is a slave of the World Economic Forum, which seeks to squash democracy and reintroduce communism as a world government. Listen, Frank, I've got no evidence that that is the case, but you're entitled to your view, Mark, at gbnews.com. Jeanette, hi, Mark. It's madness, this EV malarkey. The country's gone mad. The mega-polluting countries must be laughing their socks off at us. Uh, and last but not least for now, Steve says, cancel all diesel and petrol car production one year from the day that they have the required number of charging points, whether it's 300,000 or more likely half a million. Steve, thank you for that. More of your emails shortly, Mark, at gbnews.com. But it's time now for the newsmaker. And one of Britain's top private girls' schools has said that gender is a spectrum and pupils can have lots of different identities. Benenden School in Kent, the boarding school formerly attended by the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, has said that while some people may identify as a boy or girl, others may find neither of these terms feel right for them and identify as neither or somewhere in the middle. These, by the way, are the folks teaching your kids. Um, this policy that they've got includes students who consider themselves non-binary, whatever that means. Meanwhile, the General Medical Council has removed all mentions of the word mother from a maternity document for its staff replacing female-specific language with gender-neutral terms like surrogate parent instead of surrogate mother. Its internal menopause policy has also been updated and is stripped of references to women. So does this prove that gender ideology is now here to stay? Has it taken root? Will this woke madness be with us forever? Let's ask tonight's newsmaker, spectator columnist, and the star of Alexandra Marshall Live on ADH TV, Alexandra Marshall. Alex, welcome to the show. Princess Anne is a woman that I hugely admire. She went to this school. Do you think she'll be questioning her gender identity now? No, because like the both of us, she belongs to a generation who realise and understand that biology of our gender is a binary, that there are only boys and girls. And uh, it'll surprise nobody that I went to a private girls' school. We had two boys' schools either side of us. And I can tell you, every child there knew exactly which gender they were and which gender was causing the most trouble. And it wasn't us, I promise. 
Uh, but for <laughs> this idea that we're going to lose the control of having single sex schools, just as one of the many problems that this self identification thing is going on, is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And it stuns me that this was not a question five, 10 years ago, certainly not when we went to school. I'm pretty sure that you didn't have non-binary and fey genders and all the rest of it. So it tells us this sudden occurrence of gender confusion is a social contagion. It's coming from somewhere. It's coming from activist politics. Kids don't wake up one day and go, gee, I can't work out what gender I am. That comes from parents, educators and people in the media. Indeed so. The indoctrination of children at school, Alex, is a worry for society, isn't it? Because these young girls at this very woke private school will ultimately be leaders in the next generation with power and influence. No, they won't be leaders and they will not have power and influence because if they can't work out what gender they are, they are not going to reach a position of power, I guarantee you. Uh, but I remember when we were at school, there were a lot of protections around the education of sex uh, as we were growing up in gender. I mean, teachers weren't allowed to teach us certain things, had to get mm. specialists in, and we never, ever discussed the private lives of our teachers. Um, and now it seems like this has become the obsession of a teaching class that doesn't want to teach maths or English or science or history, they'd much rather spend the day on activism and show kids how to glue themselves to the pavement or dress up in glitter and rainbows and do some kind of black armband version of history in Australia. It's, it's basically Indigenous politics wherever you go here. I don't know what it's like in Britain. But this kind of focus on activism is not healthy for kids. And this gender confusion has real consequences like medical interventions that will ruin their whole lives. Of course, you know, the people that have drawn up this policy at Benenden School will argue that the world is changing. Uh, plenty of experts do suggest that gender is an abstract thing. And all they want to do is make sure that all of their students, whether male, female or neither, feel included and accepted. Uh, you mentioned medical interventions. The General Medical Council, Alexandra, have got rid of the word mother. Uh, to cancel that word is a particular insult to women, isn't it? Of course it is. You don't inc you're not inclusive if you exclude women from motherhood. I mean, you can only be a mother if you are a woman. And we used to know this. This is an accepted biologic reality. And for a medical institution to be playing politics with biology is a new form of insanity. I mean, as if the NHS hasn't got enough problems without going down the path of we're not really sure what gender mothers are now. Uh, it's it's a topic that startles people because they can't understand how we got here in such a short period of time. These are not conversations we should be having early in the morning or late at night for you. It's it's like we're going back. That actually, you know what? We're not going backwards because human civilization has never been this confused before. This is a new thing. Uh, you talk about this on your brilliant show. I'll give the details in a second. But briefly, if you can, how is this going to pan out, Alexandra? Will we ever get back to normal? Well. Your country is, is actually leading the way. We're watching from Australia where the backlash against gender ideology, particularly the erasure of women and the language surrounding women, is causing ordinary people to say, you know what, this has to stop. We are walking back from all of this activist politics. We would like to see a return to normality, please, if at all possible. Um, and so I think what we're going to see is a rejection. It will be a phase like Gothics were a phase for a while and emos were a phase for a while. I think this focus on gender activism will start to fade out, particularly as the court cases come through on the gender reassignment and affirmation surgery. I think that will pull away the rest of the movement that surrounds it. Uh, Alexandra Marshall can be found live on the Alexandra Marshall Show, ADHTV, ADHTV on YouTube. Alex, we'll catch up soon. Thanks for an early start. Uh, live from Down Under. Uh, lots to come with the pundits. Has shoplifting effectively been decriminalised? First, the weather. That warm feeling inside. From Boxed Boyers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. 
Hello there, good evening. I'm Jonathan Vautry, who have your latest GB News weather forecast provided by the Met Office. There's the increasing threats of some heavy and thundery showers as we move into the second half of the weekend. First, Saturday evening, though, generally lighter showers on the cards for southwest England, Wales, generally pushing towards Northern Ireland into the early hours of Sunday morning. The cloud building across the southern two thirds of the UK, so it will be a relatively mild night here, particularly across the far south of England, high teens holding up, but across the far north of Scotland, a much chillier night, two to 5 degrees Celsius quite widely, if not some frost in rural spots. That cloud and rain will continue to steadily progress its way northwards. The northern hours, parts of the highlands are seeing a good amount of sunshine, but we'll start to see those heavy thundery showers pushing into southern England, Wales, as we head throughout the day. Some local disruption and flooding is possible. Generally, temperatures will be a notch down compared to Saturday for the southeast, thanks to an increased amount of cloud, but maybe slightly higher for parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Into Monday, this cold front will be swinging its way through. Behind that, we'll see some fresher air filtering in behind it. So still quite muggy and mild ahead of it, but eventually seeing those fresher conditions swing in. But on the cold front itself, again, really quite unsettled with heavy showers, thunderstorms and rain in the mixture and quite a blustery day for all of us on the whole. There's further unsettled weather as we head throughout the rest of the week as well. And low pressure looks like it will be staying in charge. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye bye. That warm feeling inside. From Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Glad the weather's got back to normal. Coming up with tonight's top pundits. With offences through the roof, has shoplifting effectively been decriminalised? Can 16-year-olds be trusted with the vote? And are Marks and Spencer right to bring back paper carry bags? Hold fire. Slow down, everyone. Here's one. What do you think? Is this the future? We'll discuss that next. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten, for two hours packed full of unfiltered opinions, unique takes and fiery debates. I guarantee you blockbuster guests and exclusive reporting with no spin, no bias, no censorship. I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. And no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm, only on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families we have arguments every now and then but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back, we're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast. Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching.
We're proud to be GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Are you ready to go electric? Rishi Sunak is going to stick with his ban on new petrol and diesel cars from 2030. This from Tanya Highmark. This climate change issue is just another agenda being pushed by the elites and companies who benefit in some way and want to control the people and remove one's right to choice. Also, we've got Princess Anne's old school. It's a girls' school where they've got a policy now which says that gender is a very fluid thing and you can be gender neutral as a pupil at the school. Uh, this from Yvonne. Hi, Mark. I have a female relative aged 13 who was a full-on tomboy. I asked her, do you want to be a boy? And she replied, um, had I been asked when I was five or six, I would have said yes, but I'm glad I'm a girl now. I think that's a really important point, Yvonne. I say you can identify however you like once you are 18. But look, that's my view. What's yours? Mark at GBNews.com reacting to the big stories of the day. Tonight's top pundits, actor and comedian Christopher Biggins, TV personality and broadcaster Ingrid Tarrant, and academic and political commentator Dr Lisa McKenzie. Shocking story. This year, shoplifting has increased by 37% compared to previous years, with some businesses now witnessing two or three incidents a day. It seems the police are struggling to respond to the sheer volume of offences taking place across the country. With offences through the roof, has shoplifting effectively been decriminalised? Lisa. <sighs> I don't think it's been decriminalised, because obviously if you get caught, you will be arrested. But I think... Is that true? Well, I think you get a clip round the ear these days, don't you? No, I think I think if you're a prolific offender, you will get. I think you will get arrested. But I don't know. I, I worry about the sort of moral panics around shoplifting. Actually, I do worry about that because over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of moral panics about people are shoplifting and they're just thieves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I do think that in a in a crisis that we've got and people are getting poorer and poorer, and there's things all over the place, everywhere. Um, it is becoming an industry now, you know, people are... And it, it, people aren't just shoplifting for their own, you know, because they're hungry, but people are shoplifting to order as well. And that's because, again, in the communities, people want cheap food, they want cheaper uh, isn't food. Isn't that an insult to people who are struggling to suggest that they are would-be criminals? After no. All, the, the, the boss of co-op said that most of the thefts that he sees are down to gangs who actually organise to yeah. go into shops and they, they take everything from, you know, detergents yeah, yeah. to jars of coffee. But where are they selling them? And that's and I think mm. that's what we've got. That's the end thing is, so where are they mm. selling them? Where are these who things going? Who are their going? customers? Yeah, you know, so... I don't know. I think we've got to rethink... Well, we've got to rethink our economy, haven't we? Well, what do you think about that? That's a big thought, isn't it? Yeah, well, Ingrid. shoplifting has been a big thing all the time and there's always been sort of um, um, shoplifting to order. But I do think it has been decriminalised, actually, because beforehand, if you shoplifted, you got either a warning or you got a fine or something. Now, you can shoplift up to the value of £200. The, the thing changed. Section 1 of the Theft Act... Sorry, I'm going to give you a fact, no, sir, we want the facts. It's absolutely true. Um, 1986, the maximum sentence was uh, originally seven years. But if goods are less than £200 in value, mm. Section 176 applies and it comes under Antisocial Behaviour, Crime and Policy Act, or Policing Act. Well, that's actually saying, well, go on then, steal, steal for £199.99 worth <laughs> or £200 and you'll mm. be fine. You will get the slap on the wrist, end of. And even though people might feel compelled to steal food because they haven't got enough money to do it, it still doesn't make it right. There are lots of other ways. There's, there's help, there's food banks. I'm sorry, I, I think that it's, it's actually just sending out a green light, so, like, well, £200 is, is nothing. It's a hell of a lot, actually. Yes, and Biggins, you know, the vast majority of people who are struggling would never dream of breaking the law. It's certainly an insult to, to sort of cast them as would-be criminals. And look at America as a case in point, where in cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco, where they've completely lost public order, people are walking out of Apple stores with iPads and are not getting pursued by security guards. I think it's disgraceful. I don't know how it happens like that. I mean, but I've, I've read those stories and I, and I know that it happens over there. It is a disgrace because 
But soon, there'll be, there'll be no... I mean, there's no businesses anyway now in the shops. No, quite. Yeah. There'll be, I mean, even now if you order online something and it gets delivered and they leave it in your porch or next to your rubbish, uh, you know, your dustbin, and they leave a note saying that's where it is, that gets taken. Yes, it gets stolen. You know? Yeah, I do think shall you need we... to move out of East London. I've got... Shall, <laughs> we, shall we be quite honest, though? Do you think, do you think Apple's really struggling? You know, are they a business that's... Is Tesco struggling? Is Marks and Spencer? They're not struggling. But, but do we want but a culture in which in, do we want a culture in which it's normalised to steal things? No, but we've exactly. also but we've also in a society where it's normalised for people who to go to work and be hungry and not eat, be able to afford food. But that's life. No, it's that not. That happened after that's the war. No, that what but that it doesn't is, justify. That's it. policy. We've got if you've got someone who's working a full time job and still can't afford to pet, to buy food, that is a policy decision somewhere, and, or and, and is we have it, to deal or with is that. Is it a lifestyle decision where they carry? on smoking well, drinking no. they've got it, their licenses they have all the all the pe you know luxuries. people you know people now are ch having to pay rent and therefore being left with no money for food so they are choosing to pay this bill and not being able to do this i think it's deeper than that i think there's a lot of lifestyle choices and people are choosing to smoke carry on smoking drinking and all, having all the luxuries, and they're not actually uh, uh, changing the way of their habits. And actually, it's the children ultimately that suffer where children are involved. Jeff has, uh, Jeff has entered this conversation by email, mark at gbnews.com. Uh, Lisa is very right. Sometimes we have people knocking on the door to ask us if we want cheap meat like gammon steak. Uh, Jeff, they're suggesting that will have been stolen from a supermarket. Now, if Labour win the next election, they will give children aged 16 the right to vote. A blueprint for the party's next manifesto confirms that it wants to lower the voting age from 18. They said they want young people to feel empowered and fully engaged in our democratic process. But can 16-year-olds be trusted with the vote? What do you think, Ingrid? No! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no, no, no. In 1969, the vote was brought down from 21 to 18. That was the Labour government, because they thought that they might get more votes. It didn't really work, because actually one of the um, Conservative MPs died, and they had a by-election, and that... And conser oh, somebody died, and the, the Conservative <laughs> got in. Anyway, I don't know. But... The, the, and we were the first country to do that. Now, I think 16-year-olds, they aren't equipped to really know what they're voting for. And do you know what worries me more than anything now is what they're being taught in school? Because the more woke the teachers are and the mm. more tolerant they are of this gender fluid and having litter trays in the corner and allowing people to come in on a lead on all fours, and then you get a detention if anybody says, sort of like, you know, would stop being an idiot and stop being behaving like a cat. And the teacher condones... That and, and gives a detention to a child, and they're in their teens like that, and they don't know. They they haven't <laughs> got a grasp of what's going on. Well, look, if the child thinks they're a dog, that's rough treatment. But listen, <laughs> I, Lisa, do you know help what? me with this. I'll tell you what I think. I want to know why the Labour Party mm. are wasting their time on this when they've got no other policies, and the, that, the whole country is falling into a pit of despair. Nothing works from passport to driving tests, to the NHS, and they're talking about this. I don't know why... Well, there's votes in it. Yeah, there is, well... But the question is, can 60-year-olds be trusted is with the vote? Is he well, really going to... Biggins, you've got wisdom, you've got experience. Well, I think that... that I think we're under... I think I agree with you, but I think we're undermining children. <laughs> because I think nowadays they know a lot more than they did 20 years ago. So. Well, have you spoken to a 16-year-old recently? All the time. Do they know who the Prime Minister is? Do they know the policies? Do they know what the Labour's manifest? So might be. <laughs> Labour doesn't know what the Labour <laughs> manifesto. Right. That's, that's what <laughs> I mean. There, is, there, there is no manifesto. Biggins, Biggins, is this anti-democratic? Is this gerrymandering? the outcome of future elections by giving 16-year-olds a vote, because we know that young people are always a bit more left-wing, and then they learn about the world, and then they become a bit more sensible. Absolutely, a bit more right-wing. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right there, and that's exactly what the Labour are doing. But the Labour, uh, Labour Party, to me, are just trying to find different ways to get people to vote for them. Well, of course, and so they're yeah. going to go for the young and the stupid... But, I mean, if, if we do have that, that's... Uh, I don't know how many 16-year-olds we've got in the country, 16, 17-year-olds, no. but, but perhaps um, upwards of a million? Uh, that's going to impact 
it's it's true teams. Well, yes. it may. I mean, it may do. But you know, when you think every time we have an election now, the turnout is getting lower and lower and lower. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, the lowest turnout okay. is between the 18 and 24-year-olds. So. Uh, can can 16-year-olds be trusted with the vote? Marketgbnews.com. Next up, are the left-wing American press turning against Joe Biden? I'll be asking the Queen of U.S. Showbiz Royal and political reporting Kinsey Schofield live from the U.S. That's next. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Mental? In your mouth. OK. Here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Whoa! Whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. After 10 o'clock, we will be dealing with the shocking allegations made about Russell Brand. That's a whole hour dedicated to that shocking and developing showbiz story. But first, it's time for US News with the Queen of American Showbiz Royal and political reporting, Kinsey Schofield. And Kinsey, great to see you again. Are the predominantly left-wing US media turning on President Joe Biden? Well, Mark, thank you. It's, it certainly seems so. CNN uh, dedicating an entire segment to some of Joe Biden's most recent lies. You know, he talked about being uh, there for 9 11 and, and looking at the rubble. That didn't happen. He was located somewhere totally different. Witnessing a bridge collapse in Pittsburgh in 2022. <laughs> didn't happen. Said his grandfather died just days before he was born at the same hospital. This is, you know, these are documented things that people, anybody can look up. That's not true. A conversation with an Amtrak conductor who was already dead. Arrested during a civil rights protest. That never happened. Said he used to drive an 18-wheeler. Mark, it was a school bus. And he talked about visiting a Pittsburgh synagogue, um, the site of a 2018 mass shooting. He didn't do that either. Uh, so you're, you are seeing some of those Trump-hating outlets starting to look at one another going, did we endorse the wrong guy?
You have to wonder, don't you? Uh, there's pressure on Joe Biden, and politically, he seems to be moving to the left. Let's take a look at this tweet, which went viral this week from the leader of the free world. It's time billionaires paid at least a 25% minimum tax. Uh, how's that story gone down in America, which, of course, is a country that hates taxation in every, in every form? I saw the greatest um, Dave Chappelle tweet or video that's circulating on social media and somebody yells at Chappelle, what are we going to do if Trump gets reelected? And Chappelle says something to the effect of, well, I'll probably be taxed less. I mean, you're seeing these huge stars that have a platform say uh, what the Democrats are doing to us is robbing us. What you're doing is you're penalizing these people that have started small businesses and are trying to create jobs and opportunities for people. So it's not going over too well, Mark. Uh, no. Uh, does Biden make it to the next election? I don't mean, you know, health issues, which, of course, are a, a concern. But politically, do you think that he can survive? Is there enough support for Biden within the U.S. media and, more importantly, among Democrats? Uh, look, we're going to just uh, reconnect the line with uh, Kinsey Schofield very shortly. But I feel that the tectonic tape, uh, plates are starting to shift uh, and they are working against Joe Biden. Of course, Donald Trump is looking like an insuperable front runner for the Republican nomination. Uh, Kinsey, just asking you there whether, um, whether Biden politically can actually make it to 2024. Well, hey, Mark, I think looking at that CNN story, I do think that what you're seeing is perhaps the Democrats setting Joe up to fail so that they could slide in somebody else to replace him. It does feel interesting that all of the sudden, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that all of the sudden it's OK to be critical of this man who wasn't right for the job from the get go. So it does feel like they're setting him up, especially with some of the Hunter Biden stuff, to slide in somebody else because they don't think he's strong enough. Uh, meanwhile, this week, Prince Harry's birthday, but a quiet celebration. You know, I think this is kind of a nothing burger, Mark. You know, Hello Magazine recently said that it, the palace did confirm that they're no longer sending public birthday wishes to those who are not senior working members of the royal family. And as you know, Prince Harry certainly falls into that category. But a royal watcher did ask Prince William while he was at Sandringham if he'd forgotten Prince Harry's birthday. And Prince William sweetly replied, it is his birthday today. You're absolutely right, it is. No, I've not forgotten. Uh, so who knows what happened behind the scenes, but um, I'm not necessarily bothered by them not wishing them happy birthdays online. Meghan Markle got something she's not used to, a warm reception. She's in Germany for the Invictus Games, and her and Harry put on a loved-up display. I don't necessarily, because I've had several people reach out to me and go, you are wrong. See, they're in love. They're in love. Well, first of all, this woman is an actress. She's been an actress her entire <laughs> life, so maybe you know maybe she's better than what we what we witnessed in Suits. But I also think it's super <laughs> important, Mark, that they really nurture the Invictus Games because right now this is the only okay, credible project that these two it. have. Everything else has failed: podcasts, docu, docu series. So they have got to make sure that this works. They've got to nurture mm -hmm. this incredible event because it's the only time that they get positive headlines. Indeed, uh, there were a couple of fashion reporters saying that Meghan is dressing in a way to make herself more friendly and approachable. Is that your interpretation? Well, I'd say she needs to work a little bit harder because uh, I don't necessarily think uh, she looks very friendly or approachable, but maybe it's just because I know what goes on behind the scenes. Um, I think, you know, I loved how Kate Middleton would wear the Invictus Games polo, and that way she's not trying to steal the spotlight about, you know, what designer she's wearing. She's saying, I'm here to support a great cause, and I'd like to see more of that from Meghan Markle. To write briefly, if you can, Kinsey, Prince William, the Prince of Wales, is on his way to America. Will people take note stateside of his arrival? You bet. He's our favorite prince. He's the most handsome. We absolutely adore him. He's headed this way to announce the 15 finalists for this year's Earthshot Prize Awards. The one question that's off limits, Mark, is he's asked, <laughs> a, a, according to report, the, um, the Sunday Times says he's asked American outlets not to ask him about Prince Harry. I think that's a reasonable request because he's there, uh, you know, to shine a light on the Earthshot Prize.
Uh, well, listen, great to have you back on the show. We'll see you in a week's time. Do check out Kinty's excellent podcast. It's called To Die For Daily. And of course, that's the name of her website as well. Thanks, Kinsey. See you next week. Uh, listen, we'll be dealing with Russell Brand and those shocking allegations for the whole of the next hour. I'll tell you more after the weather. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there, good evening. I'm Jonathan Vautry, who have your latest GB News weather forecast provided by the Met Office. There's the increasing threats of some heavy and thundery showers as we move into the second half of the weekend. First, Saturday evening, though, generally lighter showers on the cards for southwest England, Wales, generally pushing towards Northern Ireland into the early hours of Sunday morning. The cloud building across the southern two thirds of the UK, so there will be a relatively mild night here, particularly across the far south of England, high teens holding up, but across the far north of Scotland, a much chillier night, two to five degrees Celsius quite widely, if not some frost in rural spots. That cloud and rain will continue to steadily progress its way northwards. The Northern Isles, parts of the Highlands are seeing a good amount of sunshine, but we'll start to see those heavy thundery showers pushing into southern England, Wales, as we head throughout the day. Some local disruption and flooding is possible. Generally, temperatures will be a notch down compared to Saturday for the southeast, thanks to an increased amount of cloud, but maybe slightly higher for parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Into Monday, this cold front will be swinging its way through. Behind that, we'll see some fresher air filtering in behind it. So still quite muggy and mild ahead of it, but eventually seeing those fresher conditions swing in. But on the cold front itself, again, really quite unsettled with heavy showers, thunderstorms and rain in the mixture and quite a blustery day for all of us on the whole. There's further unsettled weather as we head throughout the rest of the week as well and low pressure looks like it will be staying in charge. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Can 16-year-olds be trusted with the vote? Clive on email, mark at gbnews.com. Evening, Mark. Most 16-year-olds don't know what they want for dinner, so they'd have no idea about voting for someone. This is just another stupid idea from Labour. And John says, Mark, are you kidding? Uh, not only do Labour want to give the vote to 16-year-olds, but they're talking about giving the vote to EU nationals as well, living here in the UK. Uh, John, Labour have gone quiet on that, so we'll have to uh, further investigate. Talking of investigation, after 10, I'll be dealing with an extraordinary and shocking set of allegations against the comedian Russell Brand. Allegations of a sexual nature which could destroy his career and shatter the world of showbiz. We're going to get reaction from key figures across the entertainment industry and we're going to bring you up to speed with the latest on this shocking and developing story. The whole of the next hour dedicated to these allegations against Russell Brand, ones that he completely uh, refutes, but we'll discuss all of that next. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6pm, Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic, we do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. It's 10 o'clock on television, on radio and online in the United Kingdom and across the world. This is Mark Dolan tonight. Now, a warning of flash images are coming up. This is Russell Brand arriving at a central London theatre venue, Wembley. Uh, not Wembley Stadium, but a kind of theatre nearby. And he's arriving to do a show for his many fans, but he is facing serious sexual allegations of rape and sexual assault, allegations he vehemently denies. Uh, those pictures exclusive to Mark Dolan tonight, we sent a reporter down and he was welcomed by screaming fans. And of course, Russell Brand, one of the best known people in the country, here addressing his growing online audience, six million fans. But how many will he keep based upon what is being said about him tonight? Coming up this hour, I will be dealing with this shocking set of allegations against Russell Brand. Allegations, as I say, of a sexual nature, they will be reflected in the papers. Plus, we'll get reaction from key figures in the entertainment industry and bring you up to speed with the latest on this developing story. Plus, reaction from my top pundits, and they'll be nominating their headline heroes and back page zeros. But we're going to devote a whole hour of this show to the allegations facing Russell Brand, one of the best known people in the country, one of the biggest comedy stars in the world. It's a huge story. It's rocking the world of showbiz, and we'll discuss all of that after the news headlines with Ray Addison. Thanks, Mark, and good evening. And as we've been hearing our top story tonight, the actor and comedian Russell Brand has been accused of rape, sexual assaults and emotional abuse in Channel 4's documentary Strand Dispatches. Now, a warning for those of you watching on television, the following footage contains flashing images. Mr Brand was greeted by cameras tonight as he arrived at London's Troubadour Wembley Park Theatre for his stand-up show amid the unfolding allegations. In Russell Brand in plain sight, four women alleged sexual assaults between 2006 and 2013 when he was at the height of his fame. Now, Alice says she was 16 years old when she started a relationship with Brand. A warning, some viewers and listeners may find the following clip distressing. He didn't care about hurting me physically or emotionally or any of it. He just was... It took me... I was like, I know that it shouldn't take you having to punch someone and to win them. To get them off you, it shouldn't be a physical fight. After that, I just said that I wanted to go to sleep. So I just, like, laid on one side of the bed. And then that was when he got on top of me and held like my mouth open and was just like drooling into my mouth and I was gagging and like try because like trying to fight him off me but he's laying on top of me so I can't like my limbs are trapped underneath him. 
Now, in a video posted online last night, Brand preemptively denied criminal allegations and insisted that his relationships have always been consensual. Midst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. Well, in other news, American XL bully dogs will not be culled. That's despite the Prime Minister's promise to ban the breed by the end of the year. The UK's top vet says an amnesty would be in place for those who already own the animals if they follow certain rules. A similar approach was taken in the 1990s when pit bulls were banned. And finally, a second teenage boy has been arrested on suspicion of murder. That's after 14-year-old Nathaniel Shani was fatally stabbed in Manchester. Two boys, aged 13 and 14, are now in custody. Police were called to the incident last night on Tavistock Square. In response, Greater Manchester Police imposed a Section 60 order which temporarily gave them greater stop-and-search powers. This is GB News across the UK on television, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying, play GB News. Now let's get straight back to Mark. Thanks, Ray. Welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. Coming up this hour, I will be dealing with an extraordinary and shocking set of allegations against the comedian Russell Brand, allegations of a sexual nature which could destroy his career and shatter the world of showbiz. We'll get reaction from key figures in the entertainment industry, including a top agent, and we'll bring you up to speed with the latest on this developing story. Plus, tomorrow's newspaper front pages, I've got no doubt Russell Brand will feature. And live reaction in the studio from my top pundits, actor, comedian and showbiz royalty, Christopher Biggins, TV personality and broadcaster Ingrid Tarrant and academic Dr Lisa McKenzie. Plus, they'll be nominating their headline heroes and back page zeros of the day. So a packed hour to come. Those papers on the way, but let's start with this. The comedian and actor Russell Brand has been accused of rape sexual assault and emotional abuse during a seven-year period at the height of his fame. The allegations were made in a joint investigation by the Sunday Times, The Times and Channel 4's Dispatches programme. Four women are alleging sexual assaults between 2006 and 2013. Here's one of Russell Brand's alleged victims speaking to Channel 4, and let me warn you that there is some distressing and sexual language within this clip. He's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off. Like, holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. He grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed, and he was naked at this point, and he held me down, and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, me. I was like, oh, my God. He raped me. He um, forced his penis down my throat, and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me. I was crying, and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. Now, Russell Brand has denied the allegations and said his relationships have always been consensual. Here he is in a video he recorded yesterday. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper, listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff, like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. 
These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. During the years covered by the allegations, Russell Brand had various high-profile jobs at different times, including at BBC Radio 2 and Channel 4, and as an actor in Hollywood films. Other claims made as part of the investigation include allegations about Russell Brand's controlling, abusive and predatory behaviour. Again, let me stress, allegations at this stage. He is undoubtedly one of the biggest stars in the world, and this is a scandal that could potentially destroy his career and rock the world of showbiz to its core. So in the course of the next 60 minutes, we'll speak to top industry insiders and stars, and we'll bring you Fleet Street reaction when the papers drop at 10.30. But let's now speak to the highly respected entertainment journalist, a regular pundit on Mark Dolan tonight, and someone that's been across this story for a couple of days now, Stephanie Tetchy. He's Stephanie, uh, I wish we uh, welcomed you under happier circumstances. Um, can you give us a sense of the scale of this story, A, in terms of the scale of star that Russell Brand is and the allegations being made about him. Well, Mark, you know, a storm has actually been brewing for the last eight days for Russell Brand because that's how long he's been sitting on these allegations and knew that it was about to be made public. For the Sunday Times and for Channel 4 for Dispatches, they've actually been working on this story for a year. So, as you can imagine, they've gathered all this evidence and now they've dramatised it, yeah. where, as, as Russell said, it's disturbing, these allegations. And to watch these allegations from these four different women is also harrowing to hear all of the accusations they've brought against Russell Brand since 2006. He's always been a controversial character. So it's no surprise, when we're talking about rocking the worlds of showbiz, we've had more squeaky, clean-cut characters mm. who we did not expect this from. Russell Brand has always been open about his sexual addictions, his addictions to porn. But what this, what these accusations have done, they've taken it to the next level where we're hearing the other side of the story for the women who have felt abused, raped, assaulted. That's where the shock factor has come in with this story. Uh, do we know whether at any point the police have or will get involved? Well, Mark, the latest which I've heard is that police are going to have to get involved after this, the finishing of the airing of this film. Mm. Because as you, this drama, should I say, or yeah. documentary, um, um, because there's so many accusations there. We've had accusations of grooming. We've had accusations of rape. These women have been... Their lives have been destroyed about what's happened through Russell Brand's supposed and, and actions yeah. and alleged actions. So mm -hmm. police are going to have to investigate. And like with the Philip Schofield story, Mark, there is that question of duty of care. From what I've seen so far, we've had young women who've worked on production sets with Russell Brand and they've been abused or according to their reports. Mm. So that's stuff where we're going to have to look back at the media landscape and be like, if it is true, why was this allowed to happen? Who turned the blind eye in such situations? Indeed so. Uh, Russell Brand has denied the allegations. Of course, yes. he's got a massive following. He is one of the biggest stars in the world, well, isn't he? It's business as usual for Russell Brand. He's mm. in Wembley right now, yeah. performing to an audience of 2,000 people. He very much sees this as an orchestrated and coordinated media attack mm. on him and his lifestyle. He's made a transformation over the past few years. He's gone from being Russell Brand the sex addict to becoming Russell Brand the cultural activist. He's been very clearer. He's been controversial speaking about the vaccine mandates, COVID. So for him, he feels like his freedom of expression is why he's now being silenced by the media. As we've seen in many cases recently, Mark, it becomes a big witch hunt. Yeah. Well, I'm delighted to say that Stephanie is with us for the hour. She's across this story and gathering more information as it comes in. So you won't miss any aspect of this story and those shocking allegations that are coming in thick and fast. Will others step forward? What are the implications for Russell Brand's career, even if proven guilty or not guilty? Now, let me reiterate at this stage that Russell Brand refutes all of the allegations. He's done so on his own show. He's got six million viewers on an internet site called... I think it's called Rumble. And, uh, look, the guy has an audience, he's got his fans, but these are worrying allegations. And certainly, I think you'll agree, based upon that clip we've just seen from Channel 4, very, very distressing testimonies about these alleged crimes. Uh, let's now speak to actor and presenter Christopher Biggins. And, Christopher, just a shocking story. 
It is a shocking story, and it's it's very worrying too, because I think you know, accusations uh, are, come very freely nowadays. It seems, and the interesting thing is, why have they taken ten years to come forward? Surely this is something they should have discussed and talked about when it happened, if it happened, because it is disgraceful. I mean, it was very distressing listening to those girls talk about it, but that was only their side of the story, and he obviously in that clip absolutely refuted says no this didn't happen well, well indeed so i mean sometimes crimes happen and it does take victims a while sometimes there's a legal process there can be injunctions not necessarily in the case of russell brand but you never know what the legal or, or indeed criminal background to, to these allegations are. Um, but, 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 you know, you, you, you do wonder, don't you? I mean, Russell Brand's uh, main defence seems to be the, that uh, really he's dropping truth bombs on the internet and therefore, uh, you know, they're out to get him, as it were, that he's made himself unpopular, made himself a target. He's had some supporters online, including Michael Barrymore, who just quote tweeted his video refusing the allegations. And Barrymore said, this is what they do, I suppose, in relation to the media. Well, I mean, especially if you've suffered like Michael has. I mean, they, his career was completely ruined. And he was one of the, he really was a huge star. And uh, that was unbelievable that his career could suffer that much from what happened. I mean, he made a big mistake, which was running away from the scene of the crime. Uh, which, but that we, we, you know, the whole thing, a man died. I mean, it was awful, but I mean, you you know, it, it, there are so many things nowadays that are happening. The Cliff Richard thing, you know, which was disgraceful. When the BBC sent helicopters to his house, yes. invaded his privacy, yeah. uh, and of course the guy was guilty of nothing. Absolutely. Uh, when it comes to Russell Brand, I think that people getting online and, and either defending him or attacking him are missing the point. What we need now is, is legal due process. And that's what, what needs to happen. Don't you think the authorities need to step in, the police need to step in, look at the allegations, investigate, and give Brand a chance to clear his name and give those alleged victims justice if they are victims. I mean, also, absolutely. And do, do, we, do we need to know that Russell Brand's name at this particular junction? Mm. I don't think we do. Uh, quick one before we get to the break. Uh, if, if Russell rides out this storm and is able to disprove these allegations... Uh, does his career recover, or is the damage done? No, I think his I think his career will recover. I really do, because I think nowadays people are are aware of what goes on with the public and with celebrities. Christopher, thank you so much, and delighted to say you're also with us until eleven, reacting to the papers and this exploding bombshell showbiz story, allegations uh, of a deeply sexual nature in relation to Russell Brand, allegations of rape, sexual assault, and also uh, manipulation, grooming, and other alleged crimes. Uh, so, look, we'll get to more reaction uh, across the political and entertainment spectrum. So much to get through. I'm Mark Dolan, and this is Mark Dolan tonight. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten, for two hours packed full of unfiltered opinions, unique takes and fiery debates. I guarantee you blockbuster guests and exclusive reporting with no spin, no bias, no censorship. I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. And no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm, only on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. 
The show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever, and that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Like all families, we have arguments every now and then, but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is, and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel. Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Mark Dolan tonight. The papers drop in about 10 minutes' time. We are reacting to bombshell allegations about one of the biggest comedy stars in the world and actor Russell Brand, accused of rape, sexual assault uh, and uh, bullying, grooming, lots of other egregious alleged crimes. Russell Brand denies them at this stage. But let's get reaction now from a man that knows him well, top comedy agent and writer Paul Dudridge. Uh, Paul, you've worked with Russell in the past, haven't you? I have, yeah. Let, let's on this evening. Let's not say I know him well. No, I um, <laughs> I have worked with him in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Uh, first of all, your reaction to these bombshell allegations? Oh God, it's such a mixed bag, isn't it? Look, it, it's it's terrible, terrible stories from women, and the, the, you just can't make light of those. I'm slightly concerned. My big bugbear is with these broadcasters. These are state-controlled or state-funded broadcasters. They're not only allowed this, even in this own documentary, they're not responding to freedom of information requests. Mm. It, it, but they have po-face narration where they literally were the platforms that are being discussed. You know, there's the so much um, reference to Big Brother uh, and Big Brother's all the spin-off shows. These are Channel 4 shows. This is Channel 4 dispatches, and yet they're merrily kind of going, yeah, we can't, we can't <laughs> share information. We can't absolutely absurd this has all happened this has all been on the rates basically we've all paid for this if you don't like this mm. prurience the very fact that we are paying for it and now where everybody's clutching their pearls and these broadcasters are coming out and saying this is a terrible thing it's like you know everybody knows everybody's peccadilloes in this business yeah. you know we only have to be around this business for five minutes and yet everybody then is astonished when it comes out I just think that there's such a double standard. This ha you you brought up the the I think the correct point. These things now, hopefully, these files are not just for salacious gossip. They're going to be passed on to the police and the in on both sides of the Atlantic, so that these things can be truly investigated. So he does get his actual uh, day in court, for want of a better expression. But yeah, there's something. There's something that, like I said, there's something hypocritical about this broadcaster being the whistleblower on this, if you like, after everybody has ha heard these rumours for years and then they're, they're acting as if that this is some great revelation. I think it's a disgrace. I really do. Yeah, I mean, you're a comedy writer now and a commentator and broadcaster. You were one of the country's top comedy agents. And I understand, Paul, that these dispatches investigations and the Times and Sunday Times could potentially go beyond Russell Brand. Do you think that... Other such allegations uh, could be lodged against other comedians. Is there more to come, potentially? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we've lost the line to Paul Dudridge, but let me put that to Christopher Biggins, who is, of course, a showbiz legend. And, Christopher, you have to wonder, A, whether others might step forward now, because we saw that with the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein, that sort of, that sort of thing. Uh, but also, you wonder whether there's a spotlight on comedy at the moment. Well, I, I, one thing, I've never been a comedian. Uh, I, 
I think I'm funny. Comedy actor. Comedy actor, a very good way of describing it. And I think that I would hate to be a comedian now because I think comedians can't do anything. They can't say witty things. They can't be uh, on, on the moment of news items. They can't, they, they can't say anything because they're going to be criticised, whatever they say. And I think then there will be a lot of sexual claims coming up mm. because we know that comedians, you know, love life. And th what gets me is there's this thing somehow we've got in our lives now where having sex is a dirty thing, you know, and it's it's a natural, normal thing, which okay. we all have loved and okay. enjoyed. Well, I think you and I will both agree, you know, a huge difference between consensual sex and, and, and the kind of allegations being lodged at, oh, at, at Russell Brand. Absolutely. And, and I don't agree. But, but what you're saying to me is you, you're kind of going beyond the Russell Brand allegations and you're saying that comedians are afraid to say boo to a goose. Absolutely. And it's going to get worse. And it's, it's not going to get, get any better. Uh, uh, worse. And I, and I totally agree, which is why comedy these days on telly is so bland. Totally. And it's so vanilla. And why ratings for shows like Live at the Apollo have gone through the floor. Um, you have met Russell Brand. Uh, tell me about Russell Brand, the man you know. Well, he's charming. He's witty. He's uh, extremely pleasant. Very, very nice. Humble. Um, I really have nothing bad to say about him. I think he's a terrific comedian and a marvellous performer. And he's had a great career. Yes, and it's really difficult to achieve what he has achieved, isn't it? Because a comedy actor uh, in, in Hollywood films, stand-up comedian, and now an online star. Uh, absolutely. Big political commentator talking about COVID pandemic response and uh, health advice and all sorts of things. Six million followers online. I haven't heard him personally, but Ingrid was telling me just a few minutes ago how witty and how funny he is and what a brilliant pod it is. So there is, there, he is a great, great comedian. And I just don't know what's going on because I, it, it worries me that these things have taken 10 years to come. Head and I agree what our, your friend said abroad mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing that they should suddenly go against these TV companies, someone like, you know, like him. I find it very uh, bizarre. I indeed. So uh, how do you think this will be going down in the, in the world of showbiz among agents? Because, we, he, for example, in the last 24 hours, he's now been dumped by his literary agent. Is that a little rash, given the fact that he hasn't had a chance to clear his name? Well, I think uh, uh, very rash. I mean, you know, and I, I, I hope that when this is sorted out, he goes to another good agent, <laughs> and another good literary agent. I mean, I think you can't... Why do people make these statements now, immediately, there's something... something has happened. However, uh, I wonder whether it's appropriate for Mr. Brand, when faced with these allegations that he denies, whether it's appropriate for him to appear on stage in Wembley this evening in front of 2,000 adoring fans. Is that appropriate? Was it appropriate for him to go on AES today and do a video about these allegations? Don't you think that he should just get a response from a lawyer? Has he handled this correctly? Well, I, th I take my hat off to him for going to Wembley tonight and performing in front of his fans because they paid good money and it's a job and he's, he's, he's fulfilling that job. And he's not hiding away. I think if he hid away, I think we'd all be very worried. More from Biggins uh, when the papers drop in just a couple of minutes' time. Let me reiterate that Russell Brand denies these allegations, but these allegations come from top journalists uh, and it is actually a triumvirate of media brands, it's Channel 4's Dispatches, it's The Times and The Sunday Times, uh, and they believe they've got enough evidence to back up uh, those allegations that Russell Brand, and serious allegations, uh, has been guilty of rape and sexual assault and other uh, quite significantly and uh, outrageously egregious uh, crimes. So he denies those allegations, but they stand. I think the answer, by the way, is for the police to step in and address this and for legal due process to take course. OK, folks, here's the weather. A brighter outlook with boxed solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there. Good evening. I'm Jonathan Vautry, who have your latest GB News weather forecast provided by the Met Office. There's some increasing threats of some heavy and thundery showers as we move into the second half of the weekend. For Saturday evening, though, generally lighter showers on the cards for southwest England, Wales, generally pushing towards Northern Ireland into the early hours of Sunday morning. The cloud building across the southern two thirds of the UK, so it will be a relatively mild night here, particularly across the far south of England, high teens holding up, but across the far north of Scotland, a much chillier night, two 
to five degrees Celsius quite widely, if not some frost in rural spots. That cloud and rain will continue to steadily progress its way northwards. The northern hours, parts of the highlands are seeing a good amount of sunshine, but we'll start to see those heavy thundery showers pushing into southern England, Wales, as we head throughout the day. Some local disruption and flooding is possible. Generally, temperatures will be a notch down compared to Saturday for the southeast, thanks to an increased amount of cloud, but maybe slightly higher for parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Into Monday, this cold front will be swinging its way through. Behind that, we'll see some fresher air filtering in behind it. So still quite muggy and mild ahead of it, but eventually seeing those fresher conditions swing in. But on the cold front itself, again, really quite unsettled with heavy showers, thunderstorms and rain in the mixture and quite a blustery day for all of us on the whole. There's further unsettled weather as we head throughout the rest of the week as well, and low pressure looks like it will be staying in charge. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. A brighter outlook with Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. You're watching Mark Dolan tonight. The papers are next. And those allegations in relation to Russell Brand, allegations of rape and sexual assault, they are allegations that could destroy his career and that would certainly rock the world of showbiz. More on that next. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. mental? Delicious. your mouth. OK. Here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Oh, whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Well, it's just gone 10.30. Let's have a look at tomorrow's papers. And we start with The Observer. Actor and comedian Russell Brand accused of rape and assault is the headline in The Observer. Also, Labour wants new EU links in a reset of foreign policy. Ties with Europe a top priority, says David Lammy. It's time to play a lead role 
in world affairs. Sunday Express brand denies rape and sex assault allegations or claims. Uh, million ditch crisis hit NHS and go private. Almost a million patients will have turned to private health care by the end of the year as waiting lists hit record levels. The Sunday Telegraph, Russell Brand accused of rape and sex abuse. Trust to criticise Sunak's £35 billion of overspending since being Prime Minister. UK fails to prosecute Chinese spy suspects. And GMC removes word mother from staff maternity guidance, a topic I raised earlier with my pundits. The Sunday Times accused Russell Brand, the sex predator who hid in plain sight. Four women say they were assaulted by the comedian. One claims that she was raped. Another of the women says she was groomed at the age of 16 after the star picked her up whilst she was out shopping. Now, this is a story, a set of allegations uh, put together by The Times, The Sunday Times and the Channel 4 Dispatches show, which has been airing earlier this evening. Um, Brand <laughs> strenuously denies the allegations, say The Sunday Times. He argues that all his relationships have been consensual. Um, a second woman has alleged that Brand assaulted her when he was 31 and she was 16 and still at school. She said he sent a car to her school to pick her up and referred to her as the child during an emotionally abusive and controlling relationship that lasted about three months. Uh, some of the other allegations are so egregious that I don't think I can really quote them to you on this programme. Uh, but Russell Brand denies these allegations. Sunday Mirror, TV show bombshell, Brand accused of rape and sex assaults. Woman alleges he raped her against a wall in his L.A. home. The Sun on Sunday, bombshell TV allegations, Russell Brand raped me. Woman's shock interview, Star denies very serious claims. And the Daily Star Sunday, workers skiving off in fear of the apocalypse. <laughs> the end is nigh. So I won't be working in the morning. <laughs> Sorry, boss, I can't come in today. I'm scared of the apocalypse. A study claims youngsters are staying home as they fear the end of the world. Whatever happened to having a dicky tummy? <laughs> well, someone that's never had a day off work in his life is comedian, actor and show... Hey, by the way, know where this comedian comes from. You are a comedy actor, <laughs> broadcaster... Yes, thank you. ...and a serious actor as well and showbiz royalty, Christopher Biggins. TV personality and broadcaster Ingrid Tarrant and academic and political commentator Lisa McKenzie. Uh, Lisa, your reaction to the Russell Brand story? I mean, obviously, what we can't do, can we, Lisa, is indulge in trial by media. No. We can't sit here and speculate, is this guy guilty or no. not guilty? But we can react to what is a yeah. huge story. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to sort of trial by media. I think, mm. this is, I think every time one of these things happen, I think the public... You know, the, the sort of trial by media is quite... It's unfair. And um, I think perhaps, you know, it's a business. The newspapers are a business. This is a business. So we're all sort of jumping on it. So I would say where I am at the moment is I'm just standing back, watching, um, and knowing the world as I know it, where there are powerful men and there are spaces where powerful men have a lot of power that these things tend to happen. And so, therefore, if this is something that's happened, then what we need to do is, is look at, you know, why is it, why is it so... Why is it always happening? Yeah. Especially, especially in the, this industry, in the celebrity TV industry, why is this... Why, why is this constant? Because in the last few months, it's been one person after another, after another, after another. And... You know, I, I do believe that people are innocent until proved guilty. Mm. And this sort of worries me, all of this. You know, this sort of trial by media. I don't know if he will ever come back from this, actually. Well, I wonder, because that's the issue, isn't it, Ingrid? Whether or not he clears his name, it could be that the damage is done, just in terms of, of how showbiz works and reputations. Funnily enough, um, I think people will question this aspect of it. Um, and maybe kind of it becomes a head-heart thing because his um, uh, pods, his rumble, are, they are brilliant. And, and I know that I was saying that to you and you, re yeah. and you repeated it to, to you just now, can you, get, can you tell us about those videos? So wh what is it that he gets up to online with his six million followers? He 
um, looks at issues at the time. So it's climate change, it was the COVID jab, um, EVs, Ukraine-Russia war, whatever is a controversial subject of the now. And he is right on the button as far as I'm concerned, but he gives a fantastic take. He's got, he's so well informed, his research is incredibly thorough. He makes you think. He puts things out there that you hadn't quite considered. So you can then make a balance. You don't have to agree with him, but he's, he's giving, he's offering a, a, a viewpoint like we do here. Do you think, Christopher, that he should come off air from his online show until he has addressed these allegations, perhaps spoken to the police and cleared his name? Well, like earlier, I, I, I would say no, because I think he, he, then it looks, if he goes into hiding, mm. it looks as though he's hiding something. When we earlier in this programme, we talked about the lack of money in the world, that people going shoplifting, you know, huge bills, what have you. At the end of the day, this is all to do, in my mind, about money. Now, for instance, Prince Andrew had all that scandal, and that woman was paid a huge amount of money. Virginia Dufresne. Yes, by somebody. In the, within the royal family. I'm not going to say any more than that. But there was a huge amount of money went to somebody because of the accusations they made Did against him. Do you mean him. the settlement made in court when she pursued Prince Andrew in an American court? Yes. Mm, yeah. Well, look, uh, the bottom line is that it is a complex story. We do hope uh, that justice can be achieved for any alleged victims uh, of these alleged crimes. The Channel 4 Dispatches show has aired. It was an hour and a half long. Stephanie Tetchy, our brilliant colleague here at GB News, has been watching it throughout. So she'll bring the latest on what's been said about Russell Brand, what allegations have been lodged, and she joins us in just a few minutes' time. So that's Stephanie Tetchy with the latest on these allegations surrounding Russell Brand. But let's now move on to my pundits' nominations for headline heroes and back page zeros of the day. Christopher, nice to get onto a different subject. Who's Please, your headline it, it is. And I, I, my best headline is, is, is this week is Prince Harry and the Invictus Games. I think it's been fantastic. And it's what is so wonderful. You know, the poor boy, whatever you may think about him, has been through it. I mean, he's yeah. given a lot of things he shouldn't have done, but everybody seems to be against him. And yet you see all those people there treating him like a hero because he created these games for the, all those people who are having a marvellous time. People with no limbs, people with, you know, broken by war. And it's just fantastic what he's done. And also, I think it was wonderful that she's there. You know, I mean, your American uh, uh, girl earlier Indeed. said, you know, that she's, she's there and she's She's not wearing the right clothes. I get fed up with all of this. And she's a good actress. She is a good actress, but, you know, she, I think she's really done an awful she lot. She's not good in suits, though. <laughs> well, I quite like her in suits, funny enough. But anyway, but I do think, you know, she's making an effort. I think their relationship, is, as far as we can see, it seems to be good. She's there supporting him. They're clapping along with everything, enjoying, you know, giving the medals out. I think it's a marvellous story for the week. There you go. Nice positive note to end on. How about you, your headline hero? Oh, it's Jim Carter, uh, the actor that was in Downton Abbey, and he's married to Imelda Staunton. And he wants to um, bring gardening into the curriculum. Mm. And I think that is such a super brilliant idea. During lockdown, a lot of people started getting into gardening. They were growing their own fruits and vegetables, and they were really... Um, thriving on, it's like you reap what you sow, so they were getting that back. And I think it's so important because kids have lost that. They do it in nursery school, absolutely wonderful, then it all stops. And they need to get in touch with with life, with nature, and it's very therapeutic. There's a lot of kids that are suffering, not just children, a lot of people with men mental illnesses for, for various reasons, and lockdown really certainly didn't help. And I think this is a form of therapy, and I really, really hope he succeeds in getting that through. Which is why allotments are such a good idea. Yes, yes and they're brilliant. so loved. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Lisa, who's your headline hero? Uh, a year ago today, uh, the young woman, um, Martha Amin, uh, was, or di was died through uh, the Iranian um, police who were yes. the, the modesty laws. 
and she died a year ago and her family today and so it's a, my front page hero is her and her family her family it, despite this absolute terror state are still trying to get justice in in her name and even though her father was taken away this morning for 4 hours they still went to the and did a service next to her grave and i think that is incredibly great, brave in such a country where you can disappear and this one family is just standing against all of that most definitely we salute this remarkable woman her family yeah, yeah. and and her legacy of courage and, and standing up to a, a truly evil regime how about your back page zero, Christopher? Well, it has to be with Libya and the flooding, uh, which has just been disgracefully handled. I mean, there are two companies who should have looked after the two dams that broke, uh, and they're hopefully something terrible will happen, or not terrible to happen, but they will be held accountable for what's gone on. And I also think that they, they, they could have given some warning to those poor, poor people who've died in such huge numbers. Numbers. Most certainly, uh, they've handled it in the way that the normally Chinese authorities handle. Absolutely, sort of you're right. Obfuscation and cover-up and incompetence. Yes. Mm. Your back page zero, Ingrid. It's the whole Labour Party. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to get off that fence, Ingrid. <laughs> what have they done to offend you? Well, <laughs> everything. Well, yeah, everything. The whole Labour Party has done everything to offend me. But funny, it, I didn't know this was going to be your topic, but it's, it's um, yeah. the age of voting coming down to 16. Mm. And I am so opposed to that. And all the things that they want to do with trade agreements with Europe and everything. And they're just trying to push us back, back, back into that. And I just think, do you know? what just get a life give us the life back that we want and and stop making these stupid half-baked idea policies and that's it so is, I've is just, this, I'm just missing the whole lot is the flirtation with the EU by Labour political suicide I think it is but the, the weird thing is he has always said and it can always be churned up over and over again that he said he's absolutely not going to go back into the EU mm. but I do think it is political suicide because it's so smudged it's not clear what his in intentions actually are fine have an EFTA agreement that's a very easy thing to do without getting sort of back in bed with um, with Europe again but he's not making it very clear he's such a wishy-washy man he doesn't know the difference between Arthur and Martha and if it's you know and stuff like that and I just can't bear the man and I and the people okay. behind him I just don't want to support <laughs> end of well, there you go she's saying it like it is uh, but many would argue that we need a Labour government the Tories have had 13 years, they've botched it up. They would argue that it's time to reconnect with the European Union. It would be good for our economy and for the country as a whole. It's all about opinions. Uh, Lisa, your back page zero. Well, connected to you, Ingrid, it's Angela Rayner. Um, she's this week been appointed to the Levelling Up Shadow Secretary. I live in the East Midlands. We desperately, desperately need to be supported in that part of the country. Yeah. And Angela Rayner, I think she is a puppet that Keir Starmer has used, and I think she's allowing herself to be used as some sort of working-class token woman and a puppet. I don't actually think that she is going to focus on levelling up. I think Lisa Nandy, who was in the previous... Mm position. I think she was more serious about it. I don't think Angela Rayner is. And where I live in the East Midlands, we have been left behind for 40 years. So do you think that Angela Rayner is really John Prescott 2.0? Yes, uh, yes. Exactly, oh, yes, that is exactly what... And I have said that. I've been saying that for a few months now. I think that she is Tony Blair's... John. She's, she's Keir Starmer's John Prescott. Fascinating, uh, yeah. Well, well, look, uh, that's an interesting debate. Uh, another quick one before we get to the break. Marks and Spencers have been equipping customers with new paper bags. Uh, I've got one here. And look at that, very patriotic. Mm. Other brands are available. Sainsbury's, Aldi, Morrison's, you name it. Uh, but what do we think about these paper, these paper bags? Is this the future? Um, this one from M&S is apparently uh, water resistant, tear resistant, and can be reused. Are you happy with her? Yeah, and you, you... How much is it? How much is it? Does it cost? You, That's... you can... 40p. And you can. Can... That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. And you can carry uh, four four pints of milk, apparently. I don't believe that. You don't believe no, that? No, I don't <laughs> believe Get the milk. That. Apparently, 
<laughs> Apparently, it's uh, it's 15 kilograms. Yeah, you can carry. Yeah. Uh, but is it, is it time to go back to paper bags? Because biggins, that's how it used to be back in the day. Absolutely. I'm all for paper bags. I think I agree with you. It's very expensive, <laughs> because of course plastic bags are terrifying. Are yeah. you are you are we? Do you think we should bring back the shopping trolley? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Oh, what, on the wheelie thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be lovely. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah. one of those. Yes. Yes. OK, you know... like, like the old ladies. Yes. OK, well, yes. listen, I'm, I'm going I agree. to... Uh, I'm going to try to break this bag uh, during the little ad break. Uh, but next up, we've got Stephanie Tetchy in the studio. Uh, a much more serious issue. Those allegations about Russell Brand. More developments after this. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic. We do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Well, more now on this Channel 4 Dispatches documentary. It came off air at 10.30. It's been in uh, coalition, if you like, with the Sunday Times and the Times newspaper in relation to allegations uh, about Russell Brand, allegations of rape and sexual assault, allegations which he strenuously denies. Somebody that's been across this story for several days now is top showbiz journalist Stephanie Tetchy. And Stephanie, you sat through that whole documentary. You popped yeah. out for a few minutes to talk to me and you've seen the rest of it. Mm -hmm. 90 minutes. How tough a watch was it? It's very tough because you're actually hearing the stories of these women and the, you know, their allegations of rape, of abuse. One was just only 16 years old when she met Russell Brand. So for her to experience how her innocence was robbed, apparently, and allegedly by Russell Brand, that's quite hard for anybody to hear, any woman or any man. You've also had 
allegations of rape from one American woman who says that Russell Brand allegedly raped her in his house in LA. So to go through these journey, the journey with the people who have gone through this abuse is quite hard for anybody to watch. And, you know, for many years, as I've said, Russell Brand has been a character who's been quite honest about his flaws. It's nothing new there. But I think now hearing this and knowing that this has been, as he said, a coordinated attack where the Sunday Times, the Times and Channel 4 have worked this on a year. How, how unusual is that for more than one media organisation to, to work together? It's unheard of. To be honest, Mark, I think this is now going to be a new launching pad mm. for when people want to break these Me Too cases. You know, there's been so many stings this year. Usually it's just the media, the newspapers will sit on this. But we've had Channel 4 and we've had the Times go hand in hand with this. This is something where, you know, it makes me think and what I've heard is that in the future this could be more comedians that will be coming out what, in what, such what, situations. Is that right? So because the idea that this dispatches investigation mm -hmm. by Channel 4 could go beyond Yep. Russell Brand, what well, other famous comedians potentially I, implicated? I think so, because there's been a whole look at the comedy industry after mm. this. There's been a lot of female com comedians who've spoken about how they felt uncomfortable Catherine in the Ryan, industry. I think. Yes, Sarah yeah. Pascoe. There's been many people who haven't felt comfortable to name names and to open up about their experiences. And when you've got a format like this, where even the people who have accused Russell Brand, they still have an anonymity. They're anonymous, yeah. so we don't know their identities. Uh, others could come forward now. We saw that with the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be other accusers of, uh, of, of Russell Brand that could, could appear. Yes, at the end of the documentary, they've asked, dispatches have asked more people to come in if they have been right. abused by Russell Brand. But I've actually heard from a woman myself who has apparently been with Russell Brand, and she's actually saying the opposite. Yeah. So, you know, I think for Russell Brand, it's going to be both a bit of a good and bad, where people will be coming out the woodwork maybe in support of him as well. He's innocent until proven guilty. And on that, we can fully agree. Stephanie, it was really brilliant to have you in the studio. One of my favourite journalists, top showbiz journalist, of course, but a political commentator as well, Stephanie Tetchy. Now, on tomorrow's show, I'm looking forward to moving on to some other topics. Anne Widdicombe will be with us with her no-nonsense newsmaker slot. Also, Keir Starmer's biographer, Nigel Cawthon. Let's find out more about this guy that would be our Prime Minister. Plus, the leader of UKIP, Neil Hamilton, and former top BBC newsman, Michael Crick sparks always fly. Uh, and I can give you a little sneak preview. One of my monologues tomorrow, I'll be dealing with Theresa May, who thinks she's woke. All of that's tomorrow at nine. Headliners is next. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there, good evening. I'm Jonathan Vautry, who have your latest GB News weather forecast provided by the Met Office. There's some increasing threats of some heavy and thundery showers as we move into the second half of the weekend. For Saturday evening, though, generally lighter showers on the cards for southwest England, Wales, generally pushing towards Northern Ireland into the early hours of Sunday morning. The cloud building across the southern two thirds of the UK, so it will be a relatively mild night here, particularly across the far south of England, high teens holding up, but across the far north of Scotland, a much chillier night, two to five degrees Celsius quite widely, if not some frost in rural spots. That cloud and rain will continue to steadily progress its way northwards. The Northern Isles, parts of the Highlands are seeing a good amount of sunshine, but we'll start to see those heavy thundery showers pushing into southern England, Wales, as we head throughout the day. Some local disruption and flooding is possible. Generally, temperatures will be a notch down compared to Saturday for the southeast, thanks to an increased amount of cloud, but maybe slightly higher for parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Into Monday, this cold front will be swinging its way through. Behind that, we'll see some fresher air filtering in behind it. So still quite muggy and mild ahead of it, but eventually seeing those fresher conditions swing in. But on the cold front itself, again, really quite unsettled with heavy showers, thunderstorms and rain in the mixture and quite a blustery day for all of us on the whole. There's further unsettled weather as we head throughout the rest of the week as well and low pressure looks like it will be staying in charge. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK 
and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the live desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate, both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm. Join me, Dan Wooten, for two hours packed full of unfiltered opinions, unique takes and fiery debates. I guarantee you blockbuster guests and exclusive reporting with no spin, no bias, no censorship. I think there is a culture of collusion, quite frankly. And no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm, only on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families we have arguments every now and then but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back, we're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Good evening. Headliners is up next. I'm Ray Addison with our latest news headlines. Our top story. The actor and comedian Russell Brand has been accused of rape, sexual assaults and emotional abuse in Channel 4's documentary Strand Dispatches. Now, warning for those of you watching on television, the following footage contains flashing images. Mr Brand was greeted by cameras tonight as he arrived at London's Troubadour Wembley Park Theatre for his stand-up show amid the unfolding allegations. During the show, he told audience members there were things he could not discuss. In Channel 4's Russell Brand in plain sight, four women alleged sexual assaults between 2006 and 2013 when he was at the height of his fame. Alice says that she was 16 years old when she started a relationship with Brand. Now, warning, some viewers and listeners may find the following clip disturbing.